was my grandma's dream. The first time she saw a six by six, that whenever she passed, she wanted to ride her casket in the back of a six by six. What's up everybody? Before we get started on today's six by six episode, which is gonna be fantastic by the way, we're putting over a foot of lift under this thing. So get ready for some fab work and suspension work. But I wanted to answer a few questions on the, uh, the C60 that we had on the channel like uh, four months ago. If you remember right, which I uh, judge that you do because there's been quite a few comments about it. And it honestly breaks my heart that we haven't been able to get to it. But the C60 has not been worked on since last you saw it on the channel. Um, one of two reasons. Uh, the shop has just been really busy on production work. And honestly, to stay alive, we've had to do what we had to do to, to keep the shop open. So to bring you content, we need a business and the business needed to function. So the C60 got pushed into the back of the lot. But needless to say, it does not mean that I'm gonna stop working on it, stop moving it forward. It just means that I don't have all of the resources that I had before to finish it. And it's gonna take some time. So I'm practicing a little bit of patience here, but I'm asking for your patience as well as we try to get this thing uh, worked on again. Um, Aaron's brother, Kyle, is actually, you know, a guy that has worked on a lot of these in the past. He's done a lot of like 12 valve swaps and into other trucks and stuff. So he's expressed interest in helping me do it either on, you know, the Jackknife Motors channel or another channel on its own. This is actually his truck right here. Um, it has a 12 valve in it. He took a Ram V8. If you can see that and he put a 12 valve in it this is probably the third or fourth truck that he's done that with so it just happens to be that you know i got some good luck with kyle here and uh him being able to to work on the truck with me and he's expressed interest in helping with that so we're going to get to that eventually but today we're getting to the six by six big suspension big lift big wheels big tires i can't wait let's get after it It was my grandma's dream. The first time she saw a six by six, that whenever she passed, she wanted to ride her casket in the back of the six by six. So that's what we're doing now, is we're building a truck with a crane so we can pick her casket up and set her in the back of the six by six and we can put her to rest in it. And she didn't believe in pallbearers, so we're gonna use the crane for that. Nanny wanted to ride in a 6x6, but she never got to. You know what I mean? My word. <laughs> Aaron wants to put some emotion by, behind the episode. <laughs> so we got to get all these plates cleaned up. Um, we got to go to midnight 4x4, get some heim joints and some other things so we can build out the basic traditional radius arm design. Um, I can, I'm going to run down to the store and then TJ will get these bad boys all prepped out but yeah we got a stack of plates here and hopefully when we're done they become a set of radius arms <laughs> that's the goal right yeah. You gonna weld these up? I think I'm gonna weld these up. You wanna weld them up? Dude, I wish. Some Kyle weld and I noticed he was switching welders and I was curious as to why. So we're switching welders. They are set up different with different wire sizes in them. Um, 
I use the larger wire kind of where I need to burn in a little more heat really? and behind the scenes, no, you know, where you don't see all your visuals. And uh, I like to use the smaller wire on a lot of this outside work where you I get mean, a look at it, that. more of the visual. Just and why is more. that that the smaller wire is better than it, it makes gives it you a lot better. more time to control your puddle. You don't have to move as fast. Oh. So. Yeah, I've noticed that when I've tried to weld, like the anxiety of like, oh shit, this is moving too fast. <laughs> like right, I need to move faster. Need completely to move faster. opposite of that. You're not supposed to, you're supposed to watch it and yeah. actually see how it's solidifying and forming. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how I started off too. Move faster, move faster. And it's not that way actually. Hmm. Well, these look really good. Thank you. Can't wait to see them on here. So yeah, you, you welded the inside of these. Yeah, so I welded the inside of these with the larger welder. And now I'm switching to the smaller wire on the different welder. And you're just looking for more of a functional weld on the inside. Yeah, and then these outsides are still gonna be penetrated. They're just gonna be more cosmetic. Just causes me, or allows me a lot more time to, to work a little different uh, stack of the bead, basically. Oh, that's I like that. Now that Kyle's finished the uh, welding up all the suspension components and everything for the front of this truck, him and TJ are gonna get them all bolted on, get everything aligned, and we can move our butts to the rear. You're not gonna see that until next week, but at least you guys can see everything go on the truck. TJ's putting the, the suspension underneath the truck to make sure it fits. We've got the uh, steer axle underneath there, and it looks like everything's gonna fit perfectly. Um, Aaron did a great job drawing it up. It'll look a little bit nicer than this with some decorative pieces once we're done. But uh, first things first is we need to test it to make sure everything fit perfect, and then we're gonna send it off to Power Coat, make it look nice, and then get it back underneath there. But um, pretty exciting to see at least the front suspension components coming together. I like my coffee like I like my six by six. How? Black. And dusty. That was pretty I think some metal shavings on my lid. Anyways, the front suspension is on the six by six. We ended up fabricating basically custom radius arms, custom radius arm pivots, uh, custom pan hard drop, and a couple other components. What we have here is a radius arm suspension design that utilizes a two and a half by 12 inch Fox coilover shock in place of the factory coil buckets and factory shocks. And we're gonna end up uh, having to do a little bit of tire clearancing on the uh, factory wheel well and firewall. Eight inches of lift, we're gonna be able to fit some big old tires on this thing. And it should drive very nice. Still has a sway bar, still should cruise right down the highway, just fine. And next week, all right, we are going to be moving to the back of this truck. We're gonna have our parallel four links with pan hard bars, our axles. And then what else will we get again? Hopefully we get our shock mounts done and hopefully we get drive shafts in this thing. That's what I hope, but I don't know how far we'll get. We'll see. It just depends on the workload on the shock, man.